Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing very, very well. I am doing well. I'm a little tired. It has been a very busy week. I traveled for work for the first three days. Um, I am putting together my uh, video for my Q&A that I said that I would do. Lots of questions, trying to organize them. Um, so I'm super excited to get to that. I'm hoping to get to it in the next few days. I also filmed with Green Apple Books, um, some new videos from them coming up in the next couple weeks, so that's super exciting. And then today I'm going back to an oldie but a goodie, a video that I know that a lot of you guys like, and I like doing because I like to champion some of the books that may have missed your radar. Um, so five backlist books you may have missed. It's back, and I'm super excited. I think only one of them you probably didn't miss, but maybe you didn't read because um, I talk to people about it and I don't hear that enough people have read it. So let's get started with five backlist books that you may have missed. The first book I'm gonna tell you about is The Impossible Lives of Greta Wells by Andrew Sean Greer. Now, if you haven't read anything by Andrew Sean Greer, you are missing out. He wrote a fantastic book called The, Impos the Confessions of Max Tivoli. He also wrote, and that book is sort of about um, a man who ages differently than normal. He also wrote an amazing book called The Story of a Marriage, which I could have also put on this list, which was fantastic. But I, and then his newest book, Less, I think a lot of people actually have heard of. But this is his, I want to say his third or fourth book. And this is the story of Greta. And I don't know what, it's 1985. Okay. Her twin brother has passed away. Her, fa her life has kind of gone awry. So she starts to do this treatment to sort of deal with her depression. And in doing so, she is able to now start traveling in time back to lives in different time periods she may have lived. I think that's enough. I think that's enough. Doesn't that sound fascinating? And you're dealing with sort of the life you're in and running away from it or trying to deal with it or how to work with it. And then you sort of get this magical power to um, invest, investigate lives that you may have lived at different times. I love Andrew Sean Greer. Um, I think he's local to me. I think he lives in uh, San Francisco. And I have not ever read anything by him that I haven't enjoyed. And that's The Impossible Lives of Greta Wells. And I got this autographed copy at a bookstore. I don't know where. So, you know, that's always a bonus too. The second book I'm going to tell you about is a quiet novel. Now, what do people usually mean when they say a quiet book? It usually means there's not a lot of like action plot, but it's more about people and personalities and community. And I think that sums this book up really well. And that is Sweetland by Michael Crumey. Now, Michael had a very famous book that came out that a lot of people read called Galore, which um, won a bunch of awards. Um, and I actually saw Michael at a Booktopia, Booktopia event for this novel. And Sweetland is actually set in Newfoundland in Canada on a little island off of it. And there's a community that has been there for ages. And the government is trying to buy out the community um, so that everybody will move off so they can, do, they can take over the land and do something with it. And we have one holdout, an older gentleman named... Moses Sweetland, whose family was some of the founders, who doesn't want to leave. And this is the story of a community that wants the money, wants to leave, wants a different life. It's about the history of the community and the people that live on it. There's great relationships, but it is a quiet book. So it's definitely about the language. It's definitely about the people and the community. So you won't be driven by plot here. The plot is pretty straightforward. Um, but it's fantastic, and if you don't know, like I didn't when I read it, anything about Newfoundland, um, it really is eye-opening and beautifully done, and that is Sweetland by Michael Crumley. Crummy, crummy, I'm sorry. I always want to add an L in there. I don't know why. The next book I'm going to tell you about is that one that you probably have heard of, but maybe you haven't read, and the reason um, I was thinking about it the other day is I was watching um, someone, um, I think I was watching David on booktube talk about um, 
past Booker Prize winners. And this is a book that was nominated and shortlisted for the Booker a few years ago. And it won the Penn Faulkner Award here in America. And that's We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves by Karen Joy Fowler. Now, Karen Joy Fowler wrote a very popular book called The Jane Austen Book Club. You may have uh, heard of that one. But she really is very prolific in her subject matter. She hasn't written a lot of books, but they're all very different and they all have different topics. And this one is a fascinating take on family. This is about the Cook family and it is told from the point of view of Rosemary, who sort of opens the book with the line, um, I tell you Fern is a chimp and already you are thinking of her as my sister. Until Fern's expel expulsion, she was my twin, my funhouse mirror, my whirlwind other half. I loved her as a sister. So Fern is a chimpanzee that is raised in her family and when she's younger, raised as if they are siblings. Um, this book is powerful. This book is beautiful. This book is really readable um, in all the good ways. And, <coughs> excuse me, I think you guys will really like it if you haven't read it. If you have read it, I highly recommend just diving into Karen Joy Fowler's backlist. I think you'll really like it. She is a fantastic writer, and I met her in person. She interviewed Chloe Benjamin when her book, The Immortalist, came out, and I just adored her, and she, I think she signed this one. Yes, she signed this one. Yes. So, yeah, Karen Joy Fowler, we are all completely beside ourselves. Um, this next book I'm going to tell you about, I remember loving, but it has been a really long time since I've read it. And it was actually recommended to me by the author Peter Guy at a Booktopia event in Petoskey, Michigan I went to. Now, Peter has written a couple of really, really amazing books. Um, the Lighthouse and, um, oh my God, I can't remember the name of his latest book, but um, he's a fantastic writer. He sets most of his books in uh, the sort of the northern Midwest, and it is, um, yeah, he's really good. And he recommended to me Under This Unbroken Spot Sky by Shandi Mitchell. This is actually a Canadian author, and I didn't know anything about her. And so just because it's been so long since I've read this book, I'm going to read the back to you. But it just says, Spring, 1938. After nearly two years in prison for the crime of stealing his own grain, Ukrainian immigrant Teodor, I'm not going to say his last name, is a free man. While he is gone, his wife Maria, their five children, and his sister Anna struggle to survive on the harsh northern Canadian prairie. But now Teodor, a man who's overcome drought, starvation, and St Stalin's purges, is determined to make a better life for them. But the family's hopes and newfound happiness are short-lived when Anna's rogue husband, the arrogant and scheming Stefan, unexpectedly returns, stirring up rancor and discord that will end in violence and tragedy. Now, I remember this book has a grit to it. It's a part of Canada that's desolate and she's really able to capture that. It has, it's one of those books where you read, you can kind of feel the sand in your mouth. Does that make sense? Um, and it has, it's just very visceral and it's really good and it's heartbreaking and it's dark and it is so, so good. Um, but I couldn't remember all of the plot points because I want to say I've read this like seven years ago. So that's Under This Unbroken Sky by Shandi Mitchell. Pick it up. I bet you guys can find it. The last book I'm going to tell you about is just a great, great novel um, that I don't think hardly anyone other than my friends from uh, my reading world have probably heard of, and that is Girl Child by Tupelo Haasman. And this book is about a young girl named Rory who comes from a very impoverished, hard luck life. And at the beginning of the novel, she checks out a book on being a Girl Scout and decides she's going to follow it and be a Girl Scout. And this is about her relationship with herself, her relationship with her community, which is, this book is set in Reno, Nevada. Part of it, I think part of it's set elsewhere um, as well, but it really, Reno is viscerally, God, I've used that word twice. Reno is very much a character in this book. It's about her mother who has had some tough choices. It's about her grandmother. It's about her relationship with them. 
Um, this was Reno's book, you know, Reno Reads. I know a lot of cities have books that they read as a community. And when after this book came out, this was that book. Um, it's sort of avant-garde in style, too. You're, you're really going from the point of view of Rory, who is a teenage girl. And sometimes she writes stuff, but then doesn't want you to know what she's written. So it's got sort of this power in its angst. That's a good way of saying it. it. It's very, very good. And that is Girl Child by Tupelo Hosman. And what a great name Tupelo Hosman is. So guys, those are five books that you probably missed, or I hope you missed, because I want them all on your TBR. Um, if you have read any, one, any of them, please encourage people to read them down below. Let's talk about them. Um, yeah, and you can probably find these at every used bookstore or at um, your library or request them. Um, I think you can definitely find some of these backlist books just for you. So as always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Subscribe. I hope you liked what you watched. And as always, until next time, happy reading, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!